Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in this morning. It is truly an unprecedented moment in our lives that as this week I was observing what is going on around us and I noticed one thing, it doesn't matter whether you are female or male, whether you are Republican or Democrat, whether you are black or white or Asian, everybody is talking about the same language and the same name was being mentioned throughout, which is COVID-19 and coronavirus. You know, in the midst of all of this conversation that's going on, God gave me a revelation that one day, I don't know if you know this, but one day, whether you are female or male, whether you are young or old, you are Republican or Democrats, everybody will put the name of Jesus at the top of their mind and the tip of their tongues. Everybody will mention and talk about the name of Jesus. But today, I want to take you to lean in into the Word of God. And if you have your Bible, I want to recommend you to open it up in your Bible apps or in, in your Bible to Psalm 23. And we're just going to lean in into these two verses. And I pray this morning that as I share and unpack these two verses, it will strengthen you, it will encourage you, and you will be bringing those lights and hope to the community around you. Before we, we read that, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful morning that we have our community together, whether it is online or in a family setting or in a care group setting. I pray this morning, Father God, that the Word of God will empower and transform our minds and our lives, that we can become a beacon of hope in these uncertain times in our history. Father God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will move in a dynamic way to freely speak to each and every one of us. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray, everybody said, Amen. So, open up with me in Psalm 23, and I am going to read to you just two verses this morning, which is verse 5 and 6. Are you guys ready? Verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When we look at Psalm 23, it is in the context of David. I don't know how many of you know the life of David, but as you guys know from history, the lives of David has a lot of uncertainties. He is being a refuge. Uh, the enemies are chasing after him. King Saul is looking to kill him. So his life is full of uncertainty and danger. And in the midst of all this confusion and, uh, and fear and danger, uh, King David wrote all of these Psalms. And here in uh, Psalm 23, it says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I was, I was kind of taken aback when I heard that message because why would God prepare a table in the midst of my enemy? Is it, you know, I, I, I would imagine just like Jackie Chan movie, whenever he got into a fight with his enemy, he used the table and he started hitting his enemies. Is that what God was talking about? Or is it like Thor, you know, in the, in the midst of that, 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 that anger, uh, he slammed the table, he flipped the table uh, to scare the enemies away? Actually, if you look at the other version, which is the NLT version, the New Living Translation version, it says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemy. Ah, then I realized that in, even in the midst of our enemies, even in the midst of danger and uncertainty, and in the midst of COVID-19, God is preparing a table so that you and I can have peace in the presence of God and to fellowship with Him and to draw that strength and peace from Him. You know, when I was in, in Singapore, uh, we, we live in a very small apartment. Uh, and every time when we have guests, my host mom will say, Hey, Irwan, uh, and all the other uh, kids, come and prepare the table because somebody are, are coming. You know, whether it's a fa another family members or our friends, they are coming and we, we have to open up the table because we couldn't have the table laying around in, in the apartment because our apartment was so small. So we only prepare the table, we only open the table when there are guests coming. And then we have meals and we have fellowship together. And I think God is not promising us that life is always 
at peace. Life will have no trouble. Uh, there is no danger. Uh, there is always danger. There is always uh, things that are around us that is not pleasant. That is not within our control. But how God wants us to be is to be at peace in His presence. That's why, isn't it funny if you ever encounter an enemy coming to attack you and you are sitting at a table just enjoying your meal and just being relaxed? What would your enemy think? There must be something behind this, right? What is going on? Why is this person being so calm? Why is this person being so peaceful? It confuses the enemy. And I love this, this, these verses because I could see the enemy uh, trembling because the enemy now is being confused of what is the plan of God for each and every one of us. So God is preparing a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And then it continues. Uh, and Charles Spurgeon said this uh, in, in his uh, commentary. He says, nothing is hurried. There is no confusion, no disturbances. The enemy is at the door and yet God prepare a table and the Christian sits down and eats as if everything is in perfect peace. Isn't that a great illustration of what is going on when we are at peace in the presence of God? We as Christians, we do not want to be panicked in this time. We do not want to be fearful. We want to be conscientious. We want to be careful. We want to rest in His presence. We want to learn to lean into the peace of God that gives you a peace that is in the midst of this storm. So I, I want to, uh, con- let us continue, okay? And it says, you anoint my head with oil. And what does that mean? It means that God grant us the favor. God gives us that peace. God gives us that favor uh, with oil. And you know, if we study the Bible, oil always symbolizes the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? When God anoints you, anoint your head with oil. That means God's favor has come upon you and the Holy Spirit within you. You know, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, I want you to open up with me in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, and we can read this together, and it says this, But you belong to God. Yes, you belong to God. I belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. You have already won a victory over your enemy. You have already won a victory in your life. Why? Because Jesus has won the victory for us on that cross and in the resurrection of His death. Therefore, you and I, we do not have to be fearful because death and sin has no more power in you and me. And He says that you already have won a victory over those people and because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit who lives in you, The Holy Spirit that lives in me is greater than the Spirit who lives in this world. Or the other translation said that He that is in you is greater than He who is in the world. The Holy Spirit that is gifted to you is greater than anything that is in the world. And that's what it means in uh, in that verse. And let's continue reading. And it says, My cup overflows. Remember, This is a a, a promise of a blessing, not of lack. This is a promise of an abundance of blessing. Remember, this is still in the midst of the enemy. This is still in the midst of hopelessness. This is still in the midst of that storm. God promised that your cup will overflow. I don't know how many of you have been to a, a Chinese wedding. You know, uh, I've been to a few Chinese weddings while I was in Asia, while I was in Singapore or in Indonesia. You know, the word wedding in the Chinese word, it's kind of strange how the Chinese, uh, you know, use words for wedding. So literally, the Chinese words for wedding is eat wine. Eat wine, which means that it is expected in any Chinese wedding that you must have wine. And it is quite embarrassing for the host if in the middle of the wedding, while the guests are still enjoying the wedding, they ran out of the wine and the cups run dry. Therefore, if you want to bless your guests in those weddings, your wine needs to overflow, 
which means that it is abundance. It is uh, such an outflowing of blessing. Not only your cup is filled, but the overflow actually can bring a blessing to those around us. Isn't it amazing that in these times where maybe your co-workers, your classmates, your roommates, your friends are being frantic, they are panicking, they are stocking up toilet papers for years to come, but yet you are at peace because you are in the presence of God, enjoying meal with the Lord and receiving the gift of that anointing and favor of God in your life and the Holy Spirit within you to give you greatness and not only you are lacking, not only you are short, not only you are worried, you yourself are blessed beyond measure in such a way that people around you will receive that blessing. That blessing could be not only about financial blessing, that blessing could be a blessing of encouragement, a blessing of strength, a blessing of edification, a blessing of hope, a blessing of prayer, because you have that abundance of peace in you that people want that peace that you have. People might be asking, how? How in the midst of this storm, in the midst of all this craziness, you have peace? My cup overflows. It's a blessing. It speaks about provision in the midst of chaos and uncertainty. Continue reading, okay? Are you still with me? So it says, surely, you know, I, sh- I've, I've told this joke so many times, but I, I want to say it again. You know, I, 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 was, I grew up in Singapore. Uh, when I grew up, obviously, you know, uh, cell phone wasn't around yet. So whenever we want to make appointment with my friends in Singapore, you know, we want to go see movies. Hey, you want to see movie at the Prince Theater? How many of you have been to Singapore? You know where Prince Theater is or the Shaw Theater, right? And then I say, okay, let's meet at the Shaw Theater in, uh, uh, in Orchard Road or wherever Shaw Theater might be now. Uh, at 11 a.m., let's watch a matinee. And, and if you agree to that, to that promise, if you agree to that appointment, we will say, sure, 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 I'll go. Just wait for me there. And then we hang up the phone from home, and then we are expected to be there, right? So when a Singaporean or like people like in my age, when we say, sure, sure, that means we will come. Wait for us there. We will come because we, we have no way to change it because we have no cell phone to contact you to make changes, right? So when we say, sure, sure, that means we will come. Wait for us there. Okay, we might be late, but we will come. So surely it will happen. We will come. We will be there no matter what. Surely, right? If, if you're not sure, maybe they're like, uh, uh, not sure, lad, not sure. You know, but when we say, sure, sure, or surely, that means it will come. And here, the promise of God says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What does that mean? It means for sure. It is guaranteed. This is God's promise that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So what does that mean? You know, when, when we look at the word goodness, the word goodness, actually, it also means God's grace, God's grace, God's gift, God's kindness, God's faithfulness. I don't know how many of you will like that, that God's grace, God's kindness, God's f- faithfulness will follow you the rest of your life. You are not pursuing God's kindness. You are not pursuing God's goodness. You are not seeking for God's grace. But God's grace and goodness is seeking after you. It's pursuing you. Man, I love this verse because it gives me such an assurance that no matter what happened to my life, God's grace is chasing after me. It's pursuing me. His love is pursuing me. Uh, Here's my definition. He said, mercy is God not punishing us as our sin deserves. Mercy is withholding punishment. Mercy is withholding wrath as our sin deserve. Sometimes we as Christians, yeah, we make mistakes. We stumble along the way. Maybe we fall into temptations. But God is withholding judgment and wrath because He has put judgment and wrath upon His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus received our punishment so that mercy 
is there to follow us for the rest of our life. So we as Christians, we don't live in fear. We don't live in the bondages. We don't live under the, the power of, of darkness and sin. We don't have to have that uh, 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 lack of confidence and questions whether, will God love me even if I stumble? Will God abandon me when I make mistake? Will God punish me and judge me and His wrath upon me when I make that mistake, when I'm not being perfect? But God's mercy follow you the rest of your life, which means that He withhold that punishment that your sin deserves, and He put that punishment upon Jesus. Pun sin has to be paid. Sin has to be paid. God is righteous. God is just. He cannot close his eyes because you made sin. Your sin needs to be paid. But thank God, it is not paid upon you. It is paid upon Jesus. So you understand that, right? That your, pay, your sin is paid. It does not mean that God is turning a blind eye on sin, that God doesn't care about sin. It gives you the license to sin. It's not that. But your sin, your mistake, your transgression is already paid in the life and death of Jesus Christ. And what's grace? What's God's goodness? It's grace. Grace is giving us what we don't deserve. We were sinners. We were rebellious. We were against God. We don't like God. We don't like Jesus. We don't believe Jesus, right? But yet God still laid down His life and to take your punishment your consequences of sin. He took it upon Himself on the cross and He died for you. So that you, when you receive Jesus in your life, you can receive His salvation. Isn't that amazing? That if, if God were to give us what we deserve, it will be a horrendous, horrendous death. Take a look at that cross and you know how gross our sin was. Continue reading, okay? I'm still on verse, uh, verse 6, okay? He says, Surely goodness and loving kindness or goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I've been in ministry for more than 25 years now, and I've seen people come and go at church. And sometimes people just don't understand about their God the Jesus that they worship, how He is so loving, how so faithful He is. And sometimes we misunderstood God. We thought that God is in the business of punishing us. God is in the business of making us fail so that He can punish us. And so when things go wrong, we always blame it on God. And the funny thing is that whenever things go wrong and we always blame it on God, somehow their perception is that God lives in I've just Seattle. God lives in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8th Avenue. The next thing that they do whenever they make mistake and they feel guilty and they felt that God is doing them wrong, the next thing that they do is they ran away from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8th Avenue. They ran away from I've just Seattle thinking that God is there in I've just Seattle. But as we read earlier, that God's grace, God's presence, God's goodness, God's grace is pursuing you wherever you go. So whether you are hiding in your apartment or you are hiding wherever you, you guys are hiding, God's love is still pursuing you because He loves you. He wants you. And again, it's His goodness that leads us to repentance. It is not His judgment. It is not His wrath. Right? It is His goodness that leads us to repentance. If we know God's heart is to have His love and His Son pursue you, to die for you, and His goodness and mercy follow you, then you will understand that you have confidence in your relationship and love with your God, Jesus Christ. And then you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you are in the season of your life where you are thinking, you know what, I don't want to go to church anymore because I felt guilty. Something is happening in my life and I believe in my misperception that God is doing 
this bad things in my life because maybe he wants to punish me and I want to just run away from church. I want I don't want to be part of this community anymore uh, because God is in Ajax, Seattle. Guess what? God is everywhere. He's not confined in the four walls of this building. But even better news is God is not, listen to this, look at me. God is not in the business of punishing you and making you fail. God's loving kindness, God's goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. Have confidence in God's faithfulness, have confidence in God's goodness, have confidence in His grace and mercy over your life, and be still and dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, one day, a, a priest was, uh, was asking the congregation, how many of you have, uh, have, uh, have uh, not forgiven your enemies? Uh, how many of you have enemies? Uh, you know, everybody lift up their hands. And how many of you uh, have uh, enemies that, uh, uh, that you have not forgiven or that you have uh, forgiven? That means you have no more enemies, right? And then this one lady lift up her hand. And the pastors and all of the congregation was amazed. Like, wow, amazing, this, la this old lady. How did she not have enemies? How did she forgive all of the enemies? So the pastor asked her to come forward. He said, come, old lady, come forward. He said, how, how old are you? And she said, uh, I'm 98 years old. That is amazing. In your 98 years of life, you have no more enemies. You have forgiven all of your enemies. She said, yeah, I have no more enemies. Tell us, what's the secret to not having any more enemies? He said, because I have outlived them all. All of them have died. I know this is a joke, but I want to tell you that even in the midst of our enemies, even in the midst of our trouble, even in the midst of COVID-19, the coronavirus, you and I, as children of God, we still can have peace in the presence of God. This morning, I want to encourage you to rest in His presence. We don't have to panic. We, we need to be conscientious again, uh, but we don't have to be panic. You don't have to stock up toilet paper, you know. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will regret it after all of this is said and done that they have three years worth of toilet paper and they do not know what to do with it. You know, we don't have to be panic, but we just need to learn to rest in His presence. Because after all, our God is greater than the COVID-19. Do you believe that? If you believe that, receive it today. I want to end this with a prayer. I want you to put your hands in your heart and I want to pray over you today, especially to those of you who have anxiety. You lost sleep because you are worried. I understand. This is real. This is real. COVID-19 is real. It's pandemic is happening everywhere. I know that some of you might have financial struggle because your job is closed. Schools closed. If you are teachers, I'm with you. I understand your, your struggle. Where would your income be over the next six weeks? Where would your job, will your job still be there? Would your employer survive this storm? I understand those questions are real. And therefore today I submit to you, find rest, find rest in the presence of God. That is our firm foundation. Do you know that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega? He's the beginning. He has the right because He is here first. COVID-19 comes way later. He's here first. He has the right. He has the strong position in this place and over your life. So today, I want to pray for all of you in this place. And I pray that the peace of God that surpasses any of your understanding to grab hold of your life, of your family, and to change the atmosphere of your family. Would you just put your hands in your heart? Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and mercy that follow us for the rest of our lives. Even in the presence of COVID-19, even in the presence of the pandemic, 
even in the presence of uncertainties and difficult times. God, you prepare a table before us, for us, so that we can sit rested in your presence and have fellowship with you and eat with you and just enjoy your calmness and your stillness in the midst of all that's going on. Today, Father God, I want to pray for my brother, for my sister, for my family, and to everyone that is watching today. If they are anxiety, they are depression, they are overly worried and anxious about what's going on with their lives, will they still have a job? Where will their income come from? What is happening to my children? What's happening to the school? What hap what's happening to my elderly parents? Will I contract the disease? Will I die because of the disease? Or whatever that is going through in our mind, Father God, I pray right now that the peace of God that surpasses any human minds will guard our heart right now. Teach us, Father God, to find rest in your presence. I speak life right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to those of you who are sick right now in the name of Jesus. To those of you who are, have lost sleep, I pray that God, you will grant them the favor of sleep and rest tonight. To those of them who have been dismissed of their work because the schools shut down or the employers shut down, Father God, I pray for your provision to come in this moment of their lives so that they also can find peace because you are the source of every provision that comes our way. Jesus, we want to declare it that you are Lord of all, that you will steal this storm, you will speak it, and this storm will come. This too shall pass. And we pray this in the name above every name, the name above COVID-19, the name of every diseases, which is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, rest upon you. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. All you that watch online said, Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for watching and tuning in. And I hope that you have been blessed by this message. If you are blessed by this message, I want you to do me one favor. Please follow the link, click on the link, copy the link, and forward it to any of your friends, your co-workers, your family members that are in need of the gospel, of the message of Jesus Christ. And please don't forget to mark like and, and just to put uh, feedback and comments for us. And I want to thank you for tuning in once again. Have a wonderful and blessed week and be a blessing to the community around us. Thank you so much again.